in the ethereal expanse of Asgard, where the symphony of eternal youth harmonized with divine revelry, the gods basked in the iridescence of immortality. At the heart of their celestial existence stood Idun, the enchantress guarding mystical fruits bestowing unwavering youth. Yet, the tranquil rhythms of their immortal dance faced a gathering storm, a shadow cast upon the sanctuary of their divine vitality. Prepare yourself for the forthcoming Odyssey, the magnificent saga of The Kidnapping of Edun. In the luminous realm of Asgard, where eternity waltzed with youth, there existed a luminary among the gods, Edun. She was the goddess of youth and rejuvenation. Her role intertwined with the very fabric of divine vitality. She was a guardian of the enigmatic fruits that bestowed eternal youth upon those who partook. Idun, with her ethereal grace, held in her hands fruits that transcended mere sustenance. These mystical treasures, often assumed to be apples but more accurately described as epli, which were a myriad of berries or nuts, were the elixirs of immortality for the gods. In a realm where the passage of time bore no weight, Eden's orchard held the key to the gods and goddesses' immortality. The divine fruits, cradled within Eden's care, were a lustrous beacon against the encroaching shadows of aging that threatened the gods. Her presence was the guardian of perpetual youth, a custodian of the very essence that separated them from the mortal coil. The gods reveled in the splendors of her orchard, a sanctuary where time dared not tread. However, even with her divine status, the story of Idun made a sudden turn when she became a victim of Loki's usual antics. Within the golden embrace of Asgard's halls, a quest unfurled like an ancient tapestry, weaving destiny's threads across desolate mountains far from celestial grace. Odin, the Allfather, regal and wise, led a fellowship of gods into the rugged unknown mountains far away from Asgard. Beside him strode Loki, the god of mischief and a weaver of schemes, and Vili, the brother of Odin, and one of the creators of the Nine Realms. Their journey wove a tale of peril, where food and sustenance eluded them like elusive warmth in the chilling embrace of desolation. Through craggy peaks and unforgiving landscapes, they pressed on, hunger gnawing at their immortal souls. The air crackled with the anticipation of the unknown, and the travelers confronted the harsh reality of scarcity. The quest for survival became a test of camaraderie, as the gods grappled with the essence of their divine nature in the face of elemental challenges. Amidst the ominous silence of desolate mountains, Odin's wisdom guided them. Loki's cunning offered hope, and Vili's enigma resonated with the mysteries of uncharted realms. As the celestial fellowship traversed the treacherous landscape, the narrative of their journey unfolded setting the stage for the tumultuous events that would shape the fate of gods and the very fabric of Asgardian existence. As the gods traversed the desolate mountains, hunger clung to their spirits like a relentless specter. The celestial fellowship stumbled upon a herd of oxen, a hopeful oasis in their barren journey. Yet, their attempts to satiate their gnawing hunger met an unexpected obstacle, desperation painted the gods' faces as the meat, intended to be their salvation, resisted the flickering flames. A mysterious voice echoed through the craggy peaks, revealing the deceptive form of the colossal eagle. The eagle exclaimed to the gods that it was his magic that prevented them from cooking the meat. However, if the gods agreed to let him eat his fill of the meat, he would revoke the incantation. The irritated gods were angered, but then relented and agreed to the eagle's demands. In an instant, the spell was removed and the meat began to roast over the fire. When it was time to feast, the eagle swooped in and took for himself the best parts of the ox. Seeing this, Loki was angered, for he thought this was beyond the terms of their agreement. With a branch firmly grasped in his hand, he lunged at the eagle hoping to strike it down. However, the eagle was fast and snatched the branch with his talons soaring into the sky with Loki still holding on. Terrified, Loki begged and pleased with the eagle for his release. But it was in that moment that the eagle revealed his true identity. Thiazi, a giant, had been assuming the form of the eagle this whole time. Seizing his opportunity, he agreed to release Loki under the condition that he promised to bring him the goddess Eden. 
With no other choice, and unbeknownst to the other gods, Loki agreed to Thiazi's demands. After their journey as the trio of gods returned to Asgard, Loki quickly excused himself from the group. Immediately Loki approached Idun with his less than noble intentions. Deceptively, he told her about even more amazing fruits he claimed to have found in a forest beyond Asgard's walls. He suggested that they compared to that of her own apples. Unbeknownst to Eden, Loki was only interested in repaying his debt to Thiazi. Trusting the trickster, Eden followed him beyond the walls of Asgard. As they reached the forest, Thiazi, in his eagle form, swooped down and carried her away to his home of Thrymheim, perched atop the tallest mountains, where icy towers overlooked the lush fields below. Back in the radiant embrace of Asgard, a chill swept through the golden halls as the gods felt the subtle tremors of impending doom. None of the gods had noticed Idun was missing, that is, until age of forgotten adversary, crept upon them like a silent wraith. Wrinkles etched their once pristine skin, and the vibrant glow of immortality dimmed. The gods discussed amongst one another, determined to locate Eden. After deliberating, suspicion cast its long shadow upon Loki. It was reported that Eden was last seen with him, the pair both leaving Asgard. In the hallowed halls, the gods assembled, their worry, a palpable force that resonated with the very foundation of their divine existence. The gods had seized Loki and threatened him with all manners of pain and torture if he did not share Edun's location. Finding himself terrified once more, Loki, under the penetrating gaze of scrutiny, unfolded the somber truth. Eden, the keeper of youth, the orchestrator of their perpetual vitality, was now ensnared in the clutches of Thiazi. The revelation struck the gods like a thunderbolt, an ominous echo reverberating through their immortal souls. Panic danced in their eyes as the realization of impending mortality gripped their hearts. Determined to reclaim the essence of their eternal existence, the gods embarked on a quest the urgency of their steps echoing through the celestial realm. The search for Eden, the beacon of their everlasting youth, had begun, and with each passing moment, the threads of fate tightened around their divine destinies. Faced with the looming specter of mortality and the indignant gaze of the gods, Loki, the sly trickster, was forced to embrace the mantle of heroism. His path led him through the frost-kissed realms of Jotunheim, where the icy tendrils of uncertainty clung to every step. Freya lent Loki her hawk feathers, which allowed him to transform into a hawk. With his new form, Loki slipped into the very heart of Thrymheim, the ominous abode where Thiazi resided and Eden languished in captivity. The air in Thrymheim crackled with a malevolent chill, as if the very stones were privy to the unfolding drama. To Loki's delight, Thiazi had left home to fish in a nearby sea, leaving Idun home alone. There, in a chamber of shadows, Loki beheld the waning radiance of Idun, her ethereal glow dimmed by the chains of captivity. With a whispered promise, Loki swiftly transformed her into a nut, concealing the essence of eternal youth within the unassuming shell. Swift as the wings of a hawk, Loki eluded the vigilant eyes of the vengeful giant, escaping the frigid clutches of Thrymheim with Eden cradled firmly in his grasp. With Loki and Eden having escaped, Yazi was enraged upon returning home. His prized possession had been stolen, and he was determined to retrieve it. He surmised that this was the work of the Aesir gods. Without skipping a beat, he transformed once again into a colossal eagle and began his journey to Asgard. The air was filled the thunderous beats of his wings, soaring faster than Loki could have imagined. As Loki soared through the celestial expanse, Thiazi, in his majestic eagle form, pursued with the relentless fury of a tempest. The distance between them was closing fast, and Loki knew he had no time to waste. The fellow gods noticed this pursuit and began to fortify their fortress. As Loki approached Asgard, the gods, set a trap woven with the flames of determination. It was a fiery barrier which encircled the radiant realm of Asgard, an inferno fueled by the fervor of divine will. As Loki passed through the borders and returned Edun back to the realm of the gods, 
The flames erupted in a symphony of celestial fury, a testament to the god's unwavering determination. The fire exploded with such speed that Thiazi, in his mindless pursuit, was unable to avoid the flames. In the fiery inferno, Thiazi's majestic wings succumbed to the relentless tongues of flame. The thunderous beats faded, leaving only the victorious hymn of the gods resonating through the cosmos. The giant, once a harbinger of doom, became an effigy of celestial demise, extinguished in the blaze of retribution. With Eden home, the gods were once again provided with the divine fruit that gave them their youth and rejuvenation. Without the looming specter of mortality hanging over their heads, the gods celebrated their victory. As the celestial halls reverberated with the triumphant echoes of Thiazi's demise, a shadow fell upon the jubilant gods. Word of Thiazi's death traveled to the ears of Scotty, the daughter of the fallen giant. She ventured to Asgard alone, as an uninvited specter clad in armor, her heart ablaze with the flames of vengeance. The radiant atmosphere of celebration gave way to a tense silence, as the gods, ever resourceful, faced the daunting task of appeasing the grief-stricken maiden. Scotty's entrance was marked by the clinking of armor and the echoing footsteps of determination. Her eyes, mirrors reflecting the loss of her progenitor, bore into the divine assembly. The gods, architects of their destinies, recognized the need for reparations, a bridge between the worlds of gods and giants. As Scotty was about to unleash her fury, the gods quelled her rage with reason, they were patient with her and convinced her to accept reparations instead of seeking vengeance. To quell the tempest within Scotty's grieving heart, Odin, the All-Father, took decisive action. With a solemn gesture, he plucked the eyes of Thiazi and cast them into the night sky, transforming them into stars, ethereal beacons that would forever mark the celestial expanse. Yet, this celestial offering proved but a prelude to the reparations that followed. The gods, armed with a collective resolve, sought to make Scotty laugh. Feats were attempted and jests echoed through the celestial halls, yet her stern demeanor withstood the onslaught. It was Loki, the eternal trickster, who emerged as the harbinger of laughter in this part of the reparations. With a display that danced on the edge of discomfort, Loki, ever the unconventional, cracked the facade of Scotty's stoicism. Laughter, like a bubbling brook, erupted from her lips, and the tension that once gripped the celestial realm gave way to a sigh of relief. The gods, through their unconventional efforts, had sown the seeds of reconciliation, bridging the chasm between giants and gods, a fragile peace in the aftermath of cosmic turmoil. In the aftermath of laughter, a peculiar choice loomed before Scotty, the daughter of the fallen giant sought solace in the divine realms. As a final act of restitution, the gods granted her a unique privilege to select a husband based solely on the sight of his legs, a cosmic twist of fate veiled in uncertainty. Scotty, armed with the weight of vengeance and the capricious winds of destiny, approached the divine assembly. Before seeking vengeance, she had already had her eyes on Baldur, the god of light, Yet, the cosmic jest unfolded as Scotty's choice led her not to the radiant figure of Baldur, but to Njord, the sea god, whose legs bore the essence of another unforeseen destiny. The union that followed was a magnificent union of both vengeance and serendipity. The gods observed as Scotty and Njord embarked on a journey of marital harmony. The celestial halls resonated with echoes of both triumph and unforeseen unions, a chapter in the ever-evolving saga of Asgard. Following the magnificent wedding of Skadi and Njord, a looming challenge that awaited them. The couple had to decide where they would reside. There was a stark contrast between where Njord and Skadi called home. Njord lived on a sun-kissed beach, called Noatun, while Skadi's home couldn't have been more different. Her home of Thrymheim was a dark, foreboding place at the highest peaks of the mountain, where the snow never melted. Even knowing this, the pair still attempted to appease one another. First, they spent nine nights in Thrymheim, after which Njord declared his experience as loathsome, 
He was accustomed to the sounds of the swans by the water, rather than the howling of wolves on the mountain. Next, they spent nine nights in Noafun, where Scotty had her own complaints. She expressed her dislike for the cries of the seabirds and found it unbearable, resulting in her inability to sleep. Njord and Scotty were both adamant about their living quarters, and after a short-lived union, Scotty declared that she would return to the mountains alone, and the two parted ways. As the gods returned to their ageless existence, the echoes of Eden's kidnapping and Scotty's vengeance lingered in the halls of Asgard. The divine realm had weathered storms of triumph and tragedy, each thread woven with the indomitable spirit of the gods. The grandeur of Scotty and Njord's union had masked the looming challenge that awaited them, the vast disparity between Njord's sunny abode, Noatun, and Scotty's foreboding mountainous realm, Thrymheim. Their attempts to reconcile the disparate worlds proved futile, with each realm a testament to the inherent nature of its divine inhabitant. Asgard remained forever altered, woven with threads of triumph, tragedy, and the enduring resilience of gods facing the cosmic ebb and flow of destiny, the ominous shadow of mortality, once looming over their divine existence, retreated into the recesses of cosmic memory. The divine fruits of Idun's orchard continued to bestow unwavering youth upon the gods, and the iridescence of immortality painted the ethereal expanse of Asgard with timeless splendor. The gods, forever guardians of their celestial realm, faced the eternal cycles of creation and change with grace, their stories echoing through the corridors of cosmic memory. And thus, the saga of Asgard persisted, a luminous thread in the vast tapestry of existence.